Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and this is the third part of the e-lecture on compression numbers. So I'm just going to go through two, two more examples. So this is example two and here we have a circular huddle member which is four meters long and is pinned at both ends. A design compression load NED of 1630 kilonewtons is applied to the member. So the section that we're going to try is a 244.5 times 10 circular hollow section in grade S275 steel. And here are some of the section properties. So we have the diameter, the thickness, the area, the plastic and elastic moduli, and the second moment of area. And those can be obtained from the blue book. So here I have converted the unit to millimeters so that everything is consistent. So the first step that we need to do is to work out the design axial compression load. For this example, it's not too difficult as it was given in the equation. So we have a design axial load with a value of 1630 kN. Now we need to determine the section class. So here is a screenshot from the interactive blue book and that shows where we've got our values from. And our section has already been decided for us, so it's a 244.5 times 10 circular hollow section. We need to work out the yield strength, and that depends on the section thickness and the steel grade. So in the UK, we need to refer to the product standards. So we have table 7 from AN10025-2, and the thickness is less than 60mm, and the steel grade is S275. Therefore, the yield strength of the section is 275 newtons per millimetre squared. So at the very bottom of table 5.2 we then have the values for epsilon. We have just determined that the yield strength Fy is equal to 275 newtons per millimetre squared. So reading down we can see that the corresponding value of epsilon is 0.92. Now for class the class limits for a circular hollow section then we refer to sheet 3 of table 5.2 in the Eurocodes. And here are the limits. Here the limits are slightly different because rather than being based on epsilon they are based on epsilon squared. So the limit for class 1 is 50 epsilon squared, and that works out as 42.32. And we need to compare that to the diameter thickness ratio, and that's 24.5. So 24.5 is less than 40, 42.32. And we have determined that, and then we have determined that the section then is class 1. Now the next step then is to calculate the effective buckling length, LCR. And we were told at the start of this example that both ends were pinned and that we should know from experience that the effective length factor for two pinned ends is 1. Therefore, our effective length is the length of the column times 1, which is 4 metres. Next, we have to calculate the elastic critical buckling load, NCR. And NCR is equal to pi squared times the Young's modulus and the second moment of area divided by the effective length squared. So substituting in the values then, we get an answer of 6,568 kN. So that is the elastic critical buckling load calculated, and then we can use that to work out the value of the slenderness um, lambda bar. And we're dealing with the class 1 section, so we're using expression 650 from Euro code 3 to work out lambda bar, and that's the square root of the area times the yield strength over NCR. We've already got all of these values from the previous steps, so it's a matter of substitute, substituting in those values then, and we get an answer of 0.56. The next step then is to determine alpha. For that we need to refer to table 6.2 of the Eurocodes. We go down to the part about hollow sections, and our section is hot finished. Therefore, we're going to be using buckling curve A. And now that we know the buckling curve, we can refer to table, um, we can refer to table 6.1. And we get a value of, for buckling curve A, we get a value of 0.21 for alpha. Right, so now we have lambda bar and alpha, then that means we can go on to calculate phi. So this is the expression that we use, and we substitute in our values, which we've already, all, already worked out, and we get a value of 0.69. And now that we know the value of phi and lambda bar, we can then go on to work out chi. And this is an expression, and we know phi is 0.69, lambda bar is 0.56. So putting in those values in, we get a value of chi equal to 0.91. There's figure 6.4 in the euro codes, which, which we can use to work out chi. So this is an alternative to working out the value by hand. So we know that uh, lambda bar is 0.56 because we've already calculated it. And we, we're using buckling curve A. 
So if we read up from 0.56 until we reach curve A, and then we read to the left, we get a value of chi of 0.91. So that's just the same as we worked out by hand. Now that we have chai, we can work out MBRD, so that's the design buckling resistance. And we worked out in step 2 that the section was class 1, therefore we're going to be using equation 647. We have just worked out that the reduction factor chai is equal to 0.91, so we multiply that by the gross area, which is 7370mm squared, and multiply that by the yield strength, so that's 275 newtons per millimetre squared. Partial factor is equal to 1, so it doesn't really make a difference, and in the design bucking resistance works out as 1,844 kN. So our design bucking resistance is 1,844 kN, and we need to compare that to the design compression load. Now we need to ensure that this expression 646 is satisfied, so our design compression force is 1,630 kN, and our design compression resistance worked out as 1,844 kN. So we get an answer of 0.884, which is less than 1. Therefore, our section can withstand the compression force and can be adopted. So that's all of the design steps completed for this example. And next I'm going to run through this same example using Master 2 software. So for this we're using a master key for steelwork design. And I've made sure to select the design code option for Eurocode 3. So I've put in this action, and here in this box that I've magnified, I've put in an axial force of 1630 kN. I've set the length to 4 meters, so this is exactly the same setup um, as the original example. And now here's the output that we get. And on the next slide, I'll enlarge this so you can see the values a bit more clearly. So just going through the results here, at the top we have our section and that's defined as non-slender and class 1, which is consistent with our hand, cal hand classification. And we have a factored load of 1630 kN. The compression resistance about both axes is the same due to the symmetry. And that is roughly 1836 kN, which is not too far off our hand calculation of 1844 kN. And the next bit is about lateral torsional buckling, so we're not really concerned about that in this example, so that's why I've crossed it out. At the bottom we have the ratio of the design compression force and the compression resistance, and that's 0.888. So if we can compare that to our answer of 0.884 using the hand calculation, then we've practically the same answer, except that the software has taken the hassle out of doing the work by hand, and the section can be changed and the results update up, will update automatically. So it's just an advantage of using the software. Now, here's the last example in this session about compression members. So, I've created this example using CSC TED software, and here we're going to determine the buckling resistance of a pinned column with intermediate restraints. So, we're going to be using a 254 times 254 times 73 UC with a factored compression design load of 1000 kilonewtons and a maximum laterally unrestrained length of 3.5 meters. So here is the diagram showing the column. On the left you can see that the column is free to buckle about the minor axis, and on the right you can see that the column is restrained at various points along the major axis. I should also point out that the end conditions of the column are both pinned, meaning that we will use an effective length factor of 1. So at the top here um, we have the partial factors, so gamma m0 and gamma m1, which are both 1, and that's the same for both the core Euroco document and the UK National Annex. Um, next we have some basic data, and I said on the previous slide that the effective length factor is 1, since both ends are pinned, so that's where those values of 1 come from, and so we get the buckling length along both the major and minor axes, and we also have the steel grade which is S275, and the section is class 1. And then here are listed some section properties of our column, so the depth, width, web and flange thicknesses, the root radius, the section area, and the second moment of area by both axes. Now the first thing that we need to do is to work out the yield strength, Fi. In this example, uh, they're using table 3.1 from the Eurocode, and for a maximum thickness of 14.2 mm, um, we get a yield strength of 275 newtons per millimeter squared. Now there's a note at the bottom, and it's telling us that the National Annex can impose values from table 3.1 or the product standards and you should know by now that the UK National Annex will recommend that we use the product standards but in this case it would still get the same answer. So now we're going to work out the design buckling resistance of the member so we use the 
the equation for the critical buckling force NCR, which is equal to pi squared times Young's modulus times the second moment of area, and we divide that by the effective length squared. And we do it for both axes, and we get the critical buckling forces of 2144.5 and 6611.7 kilonewtons about the y and z axes, respectively. And you remember that the column is restrained in the y direction. Therefore, it makes sense that the critical buckling force around the y-axis would be considerably less. And note that it's almost a third of the value for the z-axis. So now that we have the elastic critical forces, we can work out the non-dimensional slenderness about each axis. So lambda bar about the y-axis is 1.093, and lambda bar about the z-axis is 0.622. And you can see it on the right-hand column that we're making reference to clause 6312. So here is the expression used to work out the reduction factor chi, and to work out chi, we first need to work out the value of thi, and we need to also need to determine alpha. So for buckling about the y-axis, h over b is 1, which is less than 1.2, and the flange thickness is less than 100 mm, um, so we're using buckling curve b from table 6.2, and the corresponding value of alpha from table 6.1 is 0.34. Now we already worked out lambda bar, and now we have alpha, so we can work out thi. So we get 1.249. Now that we have thi, we can work out chi. So we sub in the values and we get a reduction factor of 0.54. So for buckling about the z-axis, h over b is 1, which is less than 1.2, and the flange thickness is less than 100, 100 mm, so we're using buckling curve c from table 6.2, and the corresponding value of alpha from table 6.1 is 0.49. Now we already worked out lambda bar and we have alpha, so now we can work out phi, and we get 0.797. And now that we have phi, we can work out chi, so just substitute in the values, and we get a reduction factor of 0.772. So now you take the lowest reduction factor, and if both are larger than 1, then we use 1, but in this case the answer is 0.54, which is the reduction factor for the y-axis. Now we can calculate the design buckling resistance, um, so we use our reduction factor of 0.54, we times that by the area and the yield strength and divide by the partial factor gamma m1, which is 1, and we get an answer 1381.6 kN. The final step then is to check that the resistance is larger than the design load, and we work out the ratio as 0.72, so that's less than 1, so our section is suitable. So since we used the reduction factor about the y-axis, which had a buckling length of 10.5 meters, and we got a design buckling resistance of 1,381.6 kN. We can compare this value of the buckling resistance to the value in the blue book. So here's a screenshot from the interactive blue book, and here's the section we're dealing with. So 254 times 254 times 73 UC in grade S275 steel. And we are concerned with buckling about the y axis for a buckling length of 10.5. So if you interpolate between the values of the buckling resistance, for lengths of 10 and 11 meters, you'll get a value of around 1,390 kN, which is quite close to the value of 1,381.6 kN worked out in the previous example. So now we're going to just run through this example in Master Series. So we input this action and make sure that we have selected the Eurocode 3 design code option. So put the force as 1,000 kN, the length of the column is 10.5. The kx factor remains 1 since it's not laterally restrained in that direction, and the ky, fa KY factor is changed to 0.33 since the points of lateral restraint in that direction will mean that the length between the points is one third of the overall length, so 3.5 meters. And then here are the results that we get. So the compression member is highlighted first, and that the, the compression resistance is highlighted first, and that's 1381.7, so that's the same answer as the CSC TEDs produced. And the second thing that we've highlighted is the ratio of the resistance and design force, which is 0.724, which is also the same as the answer in the CSE TEDs example. So this is the end of our session on compression members, and remember that you can always refer back to this e-lecture or the complimentary summary handout for quick reference because it contains all of the key points. So thank you for listening.